so dr shamruti uh, dani and uh, she is going to be the first presenting author here bit by bit to 66 good afternoon i will be presenting a case of simple limbal epithelial transplant done for limbal stem cell deficiency can i have the timer please 4 minutes I'll be presenting a case of simple limbal epithelial transplant done for limbal stem cell deficiency due to chronic vernal keratoconjunctivitis. A 20 years old male presented to us with complaints of gradual progressive diminution of vision in both the eyes since two months or more in the right eye than the left. He was a known case of vernal keratoconjunctivitis in both eyes and was using olopatidine eye drops and steroids on and off since the last five years. Uh, the best corrected visual acuity was 1 by 60 in the right eye and 6 by 18 in the left eye. And on slit lamp examination, there was a total absence of limbal palisades in both the eyes, along with 360 degrees superficial corneal vascularization and a thick panis with diffuse stromal scarring in the right eye and peripheral stromal scarring uh, sparing the central cornea in the left eye. So he was diagnosed as a case of both eyes limbal stem cell deficiency secondary to chronic vernal keratoconjunctivitis. We started the patient on both eyes topical tacrolimus 0.1% ointment, preservative free lubricant and lotiprednol eye drops. The left eye was managed conservatively and the right eye underwent an allogenic simple limbal epithelial transplant with amniotic membrane graft. Post-operatively, we started the right eye on topical prednisolone, ofloxacin, homotropin and preservative-free lubricant drops. So this is a video of the right eye surgery. A 360 degrees peritomy was done. The panis was then slowly and carefully dissected away from the cornea with a crescent blade and it was excised. The amniotic membrane graft was then placed over the cornea, tucked in under the conjunctiva and secured in place with fibrin glue. Donor limbal tissue was excised and it was placed over the periphery of the cornea after dividing it into small bits. Fibrin glue was put and a bandage contact lens was applied. So post-operatively, the patient showed a remarkable improvement in the ocular surface as well as in the vision. And at two months post-slit, we could see regression of the vascularization along with resolution of the scarring with vision improving to 6 by 9 and improving further to 6 by 6 at one year post-slit. The steroids were also tapered topically and the patient by one year post-op was only on uh, topical immunomodulators. The anterior segment OCT and epithelial thickness map also showed that the preoperative irregular thick epithelium resolved to a much more uniform surface at two months and then at one year post-op. These changes were also confirmed on Pentacam and Zernike's analysis showed a remarkable improvement in the root mean square value from 7.9 to 4.2 reflecting the reduced aberrations of the eye. Limbal stem cell deficiency is seen in 1 to 2 percent of patients with vernal keratoconjunctivitis and it is a significant ocular morbidity. The prolonged use of benzalkonium containing drops in these patients could exacerbate the pre-existing limbal stem cell insult which occurs due to the chronic ocular surface inflammation. The, uh, this has also been proved in mouse models of limbal stem cell deficiency uh, showing the toxicity of higher concentrations of benzalkonium chloride in the eyes. So with minimal tissue, allogenic slit can cause remarkable improvement in the ocular surface and vision in these patients and hence it is important that there is timely identification of the inciting factors along with appropriate management to salvage vision in this young population of patients. These are my references. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, any questions from? Me? Okay, this was allogenic slit from cadaver. Yes, sir. Okay. So, what is the patient getting this immunosuppression? Sorry. What immunosuppressives are used now? Sir, right now he is on topical cyclosporine uh, point one percent eye drops using twice a day. Dr. Samruti, uh, you have taken the uh, limbal tissue from the cadaveric eye, right? 
yes ma'am so will there be any changes if you take from any living related means donor in the visual uh, recovery in visual recovery uh, will not but the uh, uh, chances of rejection would be lower if it's a, a living related donor but uh, visually if uh, if it is accepted well then if it if it's taken up well then it would produce the same results in either of the two yeah. cases